welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 12 for May the 19th, 2019. We're still in Unit 3, uh, entitled The Spread of the Gospel. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Surrendering Pride. Our devotion reading is taken from Romans chapter 10, uh, verses 5 through 13, our background scripture Romans chapter 11 and we'll be studying today from Romans chapter 11 verses 11 through 24 our key verse reads boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee Romans chapter 11 verse 18 uh, from the King James Version our lesson aims today, number one, is to explain Paul's metaphor of the olive tree with wild branches grafted in. Second, to recognize with humility the price that was paid in order for one to stand justified before God. And then our third aim is to repent of any arrogance you have expressed against those who do not know Christ as if your own standing were a matter of anything but the grace of God. We have three outlines today that will be part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Be Grateful. Uh, the second outline is entitled, Be Careful. And then the third outline is entitled, Be Amazed. We certainly thank and praise God for this opportunity to share the Sunday School lesson with you and we hope that uh, you have been following us in the book of Romans uh, the last few weeks we have been covering uh, the Apostle Paul's writing uh, we have a lot to uncover today uh, to try to understand uh, Paul's argument um, his case uh, with the Jews and Gentiles so we want to read some of the uh, biblical context for this lesson uh, it has been God's desire and design for people to dwell in unity with, with each other uh, as they dwell in unity with Him. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 8 verse 11 and also Romans chapter 11 verse 25. We sometimes have to remind each other that we are all descended from one Adam. I uh, also want you to look at uh, Acts chapter 17 uh, verse 26 but Paul wrote to inform the Jews that God has not cast away his people he has preserved a remnant of the faithful Paul also shares in frustration why many Jews yet do not believe having blinded eyes because of pride uh, this is similar to the cycle they have continued to repeat uh, for generations um, I want to also just share with you uh, a few points that uh, uh, can help in terms of a foundation of understanding the book of Romans but it is clear that uh, Paul never visited the church at Rome we can see that in, in Romans chapter 1 verses 8 through 13 and the absence of, of any reference to Peter um, or the other apostles suggest that the Roman church had not experienced direct apostolic ministry. Uh, both Jews and Gentiles were members of the church in Rome uh, and indicates a predominance of Gentiles uh, as possibly does the warning to Gentile Christians uh, not to be proud. So uh, at the time of, of uh, the writing of Romans uh, Paul was deeply concerned that the Christian church should be a fellowship of Jews and Gentiles uh, together in uh, the one body of Christ. Uh, another point that I want to make, I found uh, uh, in studying this lesson uh, from Romans chapter 9, uh, it kind of sets the tone for uh, what the Apostle Paul is experiencing. I want to read this to you. Uh, this is Roman chapter, uh, Romans chapter 9 verse 1 and verse 2. The Bible says, I tell the truth in Christ, I am not lying, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great sorrow 
and continual grief in my heart. Uh, and I thought that was very important to understand that Paul is writing uh, from a posture of concern. Um, the, the issue here, uh, as we will uncover in this lesson, uh, Paul is concerned about Israel. He's concerned about the Jews. Uh, he's concerned about the Gentiles. They are not getting along. Uh, whatever their issues are, one group is uh, uh, somehow holding exclusive rights to their position as though they have earned something uh, looking down on the other group uh, if you will and Paul is doing his best to address uh, these issues uh, but one thing that he does do uh, the Apostle Paul he uses scripture uh, to understand the issues with Israel uh, he uses the Old Testament uh, if you study uh, all of the book of Romans uh, you will find that there are more than 50 uh, references to the Old Testament uh, that is huge in terms of the Apostle Paul understanding the law understanding prophecy understanding the fulfillment of prophecy uh, and looking at the Old Testament and using it as a gauge to help him to understand what's happening with Israel uh, what's happening with them in terms of 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 their interpretation of the Mosaic law uh, and, and in terms of the grace aspect or faith uh, believing what God has already done as opposed to trying to earn uh, justification by law keeping and I uh, that is sort of the overarching theme of our lesson today uh, and we could have a uh, a lengthy discussion about law versus grace it was a threat then in Paul's day and it is a threat to us now traditions legalism versus grace uh, uh, condemnation as opposed to or in concert with not keeping of, of certain traditions uh, as opposed to accepting uh, of God's grace for what he has already done I hope you can uh, understand that uh, the book of Galatians would also be an excellent book to study uh, that concept of, of the law uh, versus grace and we have to be careful uh, with our efforts in terms of trying to help God to save us uh, and this is the warning to uh, the Gentiles uh, and one last point as you go back and forth with reading the book of Romans it would be uh, helpful to understand that the conversation shifts from the Jews you can tell what Paul is saying that would uh, 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 reference the Jews uh, and then also the conversation shifts to uh, a discussion with the Gentiles so we want to uh, make sure we understand uh, who the audience is uh, in terms of this writing. So we want to begin with Romans chapter 11 verses 11 through 15. Now the first outline is entitled uh, Be Grateful and I want to read this from the King James Version. Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Not at all. Rather because of their transgression salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion bring? I am talking to you Gentiles. That, that's what I meant earlier about the conversation uh, changing or shifting from Jews to Gentiles. So Paul says in verse 13, he's talking to the Gentiles. Uh, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles I take pride in my ministry verse 14 in the hope that I may somehow arise my own people to envy and save some of them for if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world what will their acceptance be but life from the dead that's a very good question so here Paul is addressing the attitude of the Gentiles uh, essentially telling them to be grateful be thankful for their position uh, and their position is of that of faith 
uh, the Gentiles have accepted the gospel message uh, and they are receiving the promises, the fruit of, of, of having faith and fellowship with Jesus Christ. But they are not to look down on the Jews who have fallen off uh, of, of this tree, if you will. They have fallen off into unbelief. They have fallen off into legalism. They have fallen off into traditions. They have fallen into the concepts of the Mosaic law but Paul makes clear uh, that God is behind the scenes if we really study this we will see that God provoked his people Israel uh, to jealousy because uh, they thought uh, under the covenant uh, since they were descendants of Abraham that they were entitled to privilege but they were not receiving the promises of, of that uh, a covenant if you will because they were seeking it by selfish means by uh, uh, legalism and 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 they were losing the message of faith so in contrast the Gentiles accepted the gospel message by faith and so God was using this opportunity uh, of hardening or partial hardening of the Jews to open an opportunity to the Gentiles to cause Israel to see their shortcomings uh, in legalistic manner was not acceptable to God and thus uh, prompting them to believe. I hope you can understand that today and sometimes God's methods and his ways of doing things we are told that in scripture his ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts his purposes uh, 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 for doing things or past our finding out. So Israel didn't understand uh, why they were falling short if you will and so but Paul is also addressing the Gentiles to not look down on, on them as though they have lost their position. Uh, keep in mind uh, the nation of Israel is in covenant relation with God. God knew all along that they would reject him as they uh, uh, had done in in past in their history. Uh, they were always uh, uh, falling away from uh, uh, God's expectations but nevertheless they are still God's people and so but our lesson unfolds with Paul's continuing uh, his teaching on abounding grace so he posed a metaphor uh, that we can easily recognize if one stumbles and falls is it permanent uh, the example paints a picture of uh, a st uh, stumbling as an accident often because we did not see the path clearly or did not see something that was in our path. So due to Israel's pride and arrogance, God has used the stumble to open the door uh, for Gentiles to come to God with the intention that it will provoke Jews to jealousy and to open their minds to the reality of God's love for all uh, humanity. So uh, the Jews long-standing hostility toward Gentiles stem from the Jews belief that they are God's chosen people to the exclusion of others and therefore should be in power and you know we think like this sometimes uh, that we are entitled because of who we are uh, and what we have obtained in life we think that we are entitled to the best seats uh, to the choices of uh, positions uh, in the church in life because of our uh, status what have you uh, but grace has brought us all the way and we should never ever forget that be grateful be thankful that God has raised you and blessed you to be able to receive what you have received but it, it is not to uh, uh, position you to look down on others as though they are, are, are not relevant or not uh, 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 somehow uh, uh, insignificant to God that is not the case and so uh, I, I think this is striking that all of this uh, conflict if you will is happening amongst the people of God. It's happening amongst uh, people who should be enjoying fellowship and unity with one another, but they are 
uh, having issues and and separating themselves from one another and so Paul thank God for his writing to teach them and share with them that's not the way to be but uh, we won't have time today but I'm also going to give you give you Ephesians uh, chapter 2 verses 14 through 18 and uh, if I could just summarize that passage uh, Christ has already brought us together through the sacrifice of his death of his shedding of his blood what I mean by that is that he has opened the door for anyone and everyone uh, uh, who believes in him to be saved uh, and it behooves us to uh, welcome one another and and work with one another and fellowship with one another if we're using the name of Christ uh, as a centerpiece then we should understand that we should be getting along with one another because of what Christ has done we should not be uh, uh, infighting if you will uh, and it doesn't mean that we won't have uh, differences uh, and things like that we may uh, uh, agree to disagree what have you but at our core fellowship is is key for all of us unity is where our strength comes from uh, I, I hope we can understand this uh, and Paul is really making a case here uh, now uh, they also have access to Israel's God this would be the Gentiles surely this cannot be right so Paul is predicting that the jealousy will eventually wake up the Jews to see hear and understand God clearly Jewish unbelief has led to the Gentiles gain but imagine how much greater the riches and blessings for all would be if the Jews would welcome and join with the Gentiles in this spiritual revolution I thought that was huge uh, as a part of this lesson what would happen if we really t came together as one people uh, as uh, and I'm not saying that we have not but we certainly need work in these areas uh, because legalism is a threat uh, self-effort is still uh, running rampant in the church we're still uh, 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 applauding the things that we are doing as though we have earned a place uh, in the church when good works should be at the very uh, center of our service and fellowship and worship to God uh, we won't have time today but you should read Romans chapter 12 uh, verses 1 through 3 I'm also going to give you 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I've really been looking at this over the last few weeks. Uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's an excellent illustration of how the Apostle Paul used his liberty. Uh, and if you go over there and you read all of that in its entirety, you will see that uh, he was trying to see people saved. He became all things to all men is a direct quote from that passage uh, and so he associated with Jews he associated with Gentiles uh, but his core mission was to save somebody to see to it that individuals uh, uh, were saved according to the scripture so he was not ashamed to associate with either group or any individual if you will but the question is asked here, share a time when someone you cared about uh, showed a lack of gratefulness and appreciation, particularly in your younger days. What did you do to provoke that person to jealousy? And I don't know uh, uh, if I even thought of it that way as I was growing up, but it's certainly something that we need to take a look at. Uh, and certainly we, sh we should live uh, with an attitude of gratefulness and thankfulness it, even if you didn't say anything your light would shine that you are humble and appreciative of the things that God have given and, and have done in your life and we should be willing to share that testimony uh, with anyone not that they uh, quote unquote should should feel less than us but that God is the same uh, he is the same yesterday today and forevermore he came to save those who were lost and so we should keep those things in mind and share 
uh, uh, the blessings of of, uh, of 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 witnessing to someone of how God has brought us uh, through. We should not be boasting uh, of what we have done, but rather giving the glory to God. Our second outline is entitled "Be Careful." This is taken from Romans chapter 11, verses 16 through 21. And again, uh, from the NIV translation, if the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. Verse 19. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. So this symbolism here, this conversation is going back and forth uh, with a discussion uh, about the Jews' position as well as the uh, position of the Gentiles. But I want to read this to you uh, so we can understand what Paul is saying here. Uh, the dough and the root symbolize the patriots uh, through whom Israel has been consecrated. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 15 uh, verses 19 and 20 and also um, Jeremiah chapter 11 uh, verses 16 and 17. So the good olive tree prefigures Israel in covenant relation with God uh, through Abraham. This is uh, found in Genesis chapter 12 uh, verses 1 through 3 and also it is represented as the root. So the tree is evergreen as the covenant is unchangeable. The broken off branches represents the nation's unbelief. So the wild olive graft represents Gentiles brought into spiritual privilege. Unless the Gentiles cherish their privilege like unbelieving Israel, they will be broken off. God will graft back the real olive tree, Israel, when unbelief give way, gives way to faith. Uh, that is huge. So Paul is helping uh, the Gentiles understand the, the, the position that Israel is in even though uh, they haven't uh, believed the law or believed God uh, so as to be saved, God has entered into a covenant uh, with the nation of Israel that predates this unbelief, if you will. So God has already taken into account but yet entered into this covenant with Israel to save them. Uh, you might see that as you read the Old Testament and the account of Israel, how they were always falling, being dominated by other nations, being taken captive uh, as prisoners uh, in times of war. But God was already working it out on their behalf. He was already uh, promising to bring them out to preserve a remnant for himself and so we can see here that this covenant is unchangeable I love that about God it doesn't matter what we do per se when he has decided to take us on if you will or as to save us then we cannot change God uh, and so Israel should be thankful here uh, even though they are experiencing a partial hardening, they are not believing, but God is saying, I'm still going to work with you. I'm still uh, in love with you. I'm still going to uh, save you. I'm still going to uh, uh, deliver you. All of us have uh, sinned and come short of the glory of God, but I'm so thankful 
that God's grace has 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 uh, uh, surpassed my shortcomings. His loving kindness never fails, and so this is what uh, uh, Paul wants the uh, the Gentiles to understand. Uh, don't get this thing twisted, because God has not forgotten uh, about Israel. He has not totally cast them off. Uh, he cannot, because he's in this covenant where he has bound himself to the terms as well as Israel. So we want to keep those things in mind. This is beautiful to understand. And so Paul is warning the Gentiles to be careful. And we have to do that today. We have to be careful about who we think we are. Uh, because if we're not careful, uh, uh, the devil can hit us. And, and before you know it, we'll be down. And so uh, it doesn't matter uh, who we think we are. It's about the grace of God. It's about the loving kindness of God. It's about the mercy of God. So we have to be careful. Uh, if you look at Galatians chapter uh, 6, it would help us to understand when someone has uh, uh, fallen, a believer has fallen, and I'm summarizing this here, we should uh, be eager to restore them. Uh, uh, but, but Paul says over there, we have to look at ourselves because that could have been us. Uh, and so this is what uh, uh, Paul is saying to uh, the Gentiles here. Uh, be careful about your about yourself. Be careful about who you think you are, because uh, if we're not careful, we can fall into legalism. We can fall into trying to uh, save ourselves and all of these kinds of things. We can fall short of believing. In God, Hebrews chapter 11, I believe verse 6 said, He who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. So it is by faith that we are saved and it is by faith that we uh, are, are maintained, if you will. Uh, it is by faith. It is not of anything that we have done. And so this is what Paul uh, is saying to these Gentiles, reminding them that these individuals that you think are down and out, God is, they are part of God, uh, 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 and, and God is a part of them, and God has not forgotten about them, and he's going to work with them. Uh, he's going to still bring them through. Um, also, I want you to look at Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 20 and 21. The question is asked here in the quarterly, can you recall a time when you wish you had been more careful regarding your ministry and worship. Share your experience of uh, impatient work with the class. And so we all have fallen short at some point in time because we thought wrong, we did wrong, we acted wrong, but God rescued us, God brought us out, and he wiped the sl slate clean. He wiped it so clean nobody even knew that you made a mistake in your life. Nobody knew you stumbled the way that you did. Nobody knew that you uh, uh, failed the way that you did because God covered that situation and he didn't even let anybody know. So Paul is warning these Gentiles, don't look at these Jews with, with, with arrogance. Don't look at them as though they are counted out. They are not. And we have to remember that today when we are praying for situations that look bleak, individuals that we are interceding on behalf of their lives look bleak it looks like it's over it looks like they're going to die it looks like they're not going to be saved it looks like the worst situation you've ever seen in your life don't count god out if we are praying then are we just giving up on that prayer are we not believing that god can do the things that he said he would do God expects us to pray for hopeless people and hopeless situations. God expects us to come to him believing that he is able to do it and then expecting him to do it. I want you to keep that in mind. So our last outline is entitled, Be Amazed. This is huge. Uh, again from the NIV translation. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fail but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. For God is able 
I love that. God is able to graft them in again. I just want to pause right there. Look how many times we have fallen. Uh, and, and we have fallen short of God's uh, expectations for us. But he picked us up. And he dusted us off. And he allowed us to go on and continue on to do the things that he have called us to do. And this is what uh, has happened to Israel. They have fallen short. They, they slipped back into unbelief. Uh, and so God uh, uh, hardened them uh, partially, if you will. But he is able to insert them in again if they believe if they believe what he has said and what he has already done then he will reposition them I love that about God verse 24 after all if you were cut off or cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree how much more readily will these the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree so again this is about God this is about what he has done and what he is able to do how dare us to think that we are better than someone else when all of us the church as a whole is nothing but a body of sinners saved by the grace of God all of us were former sinners good sinners prostitutes drug addicts uh, whatever God delivered you from and now we are Christians called saints of God dressed up and decorated and now we're looking down on someone else as though we don't have a past this is the message that Paul is sending uh, to the Gentiles he says here you were wild by nature <laughs> and, I, and we all can can reflect upon how wild we were in the streets how wild we were in life but God got a hold of us at some point in time and set us free from the power of sin and Satan he set us free washed us and made us whole cleansed us from our unrighteousness stood us up as witnesses for him gave us a job to do in the house of in the kingdom of our God and how dare we now look out in the audience and we see people who are struggling and have not uh, become believers and are struggling in the faith and we not embrace them and helping them to understand that they too can be brought to maturity in Christ Jesus that is our job to remind them uh, uh, with a lifestyle and an attitude of gratefulness that what God has done for us he is able to do uh, for them but these Jews and these Gentiles were waging war among themselves for absolutely no reason when uh, uh, neither group had uh, preference had had a right to say anything uh, about any other person uh, or individual uh, matter we have no right to approach it that way when the same grace that saved us saved them so God just used this opportunity to bring in some wild folks uh, into his uh, church, into his uh, fellowship, into his son, Jesus Christ, into the uh, a sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. God chose to bring us into this. So it is nothing that we have done to earn our right today. But this is a very important discussion that we could continue on at great length to help us to understand that God has the power God has the power to stabilize individuals he has power to bring someone into fellowship uh, I can just remember and I'll, I'll move on uh, quickly uh, but I remember God laboring with me over years and years to give my life to him and I, I could I, I wasn't thinking about serving the Lord. I had no intentions of serving the Lord. I had no intentions of preaching the gospel. I had no intentions of serving God on any level. But his word had already gone out of his mouth that I would be one of his. And that is where I am today. Uh, and so uh, the Jews right now may reject this gospel. But in order for them to be saved. 
they must believe in order for them to really embrace the heritage uh, uh, of Jesus Christ and the heritage of Abraham uh, which is nothing but a type of Christ they must become believers and the gospel message praise God is being preached to a world full of sinners to a world full of unbelievers but God doesn't stop sending the message he continues to send it granting and giving opportunity for those who do not know him to get to know him so I think it's a good sign when the preacher shows up that God is continuously raising up witnesses to share with this sinful world uh, uh, the promises uh, and the grace of Jesus Christ the loving kindness the death the burial the resurrection and the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is a very good sign so the fact that the Gentiles were able to catch it in a moment where uh, uh, the gospel message went out and they believed it uh, that is a privilege that is an honor and so God has blessed them to become uh, members of his church and of his body so this is huge today I, I, I really thank God uh, for uh, humbling me to share this with you today uh, and I thank God that I'm still aware of where he brought me from I know that it had to be uh, the mercy and the grace of God I know it could not have been anything that I could have done ever done to save myself but it, it is also God's grace that is sustaining me our job is continuously uh, uh, presented to us to believe we must fight the good fight of faith uh, also want to give you first Timothy chapter 2 uh, verses 1 through 4 this lesson has been a, a, a big blessing to me um, and I hope it has been a blessing to you I hope that you will read this and if you don't do anything else but let this uh, passage of scripture humble you and reflect upon where the Lord have brought you from and be mindful of those who have not quote unquote arrived be mindful of those who don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins don't look down on them they may be sinners today but they might be saints on tomorrow so I want to finish with this closing prayer dear Lord today we seek guidance in removing the selfish desires within us we particularly seek to arrest those desires that pull us away from you keep us in your arms and loving care we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hope, trust, and pray that you have enjoyed this uh, lesson as I have enjoyed presenting it and just reminding us that God has brought all of us. We need to do better getting along with one another, fellowshipping with one another, learning the strengths that we could enjoy if we would just but come together. So until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.